I will uh, talk about the Danish painters of the Cobra group. Um, and these artists are um, associated as the protagonists of um, the Danish post-war art scene and its most international success. Their spontaneous abstraction was not only emblematic of its era, but also of the emergence of a new prominence of exhibitions across Western Europe and in the strategic use of exhibitions in the new uh, art world settling there. They were arguably the first avant-garde group um, born into the museum world with the first exhibition taking, as a group taking place in a municipal museum in Amsterdam um, at the Stedelijk. And soon they were also featured in various constellations at the Venice Biennale, Documenta, etc. My presentation will highlight another path of their exhibitions across the Iron Curtain, where the Danish Cobra artists were exhibited on several occasions in official exhibitions organized by the Danish state. This can highlight the meeting of two art worlds in divided Europe, East and West, um, the artists and other actors in the context uh, of this um, uh, art world in Europe and in the cultural diplomatic exhibition uh, as an overlooked exhibition type, especially in the bloc. Uh, the research is part of the project, uh, as you also mentioned, exhibiting across the Iron Curtain, the forgotten trail of Danish artists exhibiting in the context of state socialism, where I work on the exhibition activities of Danish artists and the role of the exhibition as a contact zone in not known and unknown ways uh, throughout the era and the developments we can uh, see here. Art exhibition became a medium of Danish cultural diplomacy around 1960. As you might know, Denmark was firmly situated in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization since um, 1949, but also placed at the front line of the Cold War through its geography, located just 30 kilometers from Warsaw Pact territory across the Baltic Sea. After um, isolation in the blocks in the first decade after the, uh, of the Cold War, a new phase entered in the late 50s where diplomatic relations were taken up as the previous presentations also uh, finally pointed out. From Danish side, um, Denmark became uh, remarkably proactive in enhancing diplomatic relations uh, with the state socialist countries, especially aimed at the small state um, dialogues with um, the uh, East European state socialist countries. This remarkably uh, also corresponds um, with the establishment of a Danish Ministry of Culture in 1961, and in general with the establishment of uh, an institutionalized cultural policy as part of the welfare state, often with overlapping um, um, personal actors and, um, uh, and connections. An important initiative of this was the establishment of cultural exchange agreements. Such agreements were quickly made with Poland, Czechoslovakia, the Soviet Union in 62, and most other socialist countries during the 60s and 70s. These were, in general, very important diplomatic channels, um, which um, Policy could be carried out um, from above, but also um, as a medium to which artistic exchange and meeting could be arranged and uh, an absolutely necessary um, uh, means to do so. And uh, they are well documented both at national level uh, through um, uh, instances such as in the Danish context, the working committee um, for exchange with the Soviet bloc under the Danish Foreign Ministry, together with the Ministry of Culture, and also a NATO committee um, established in, in Britain in 1960, Working Committee for East-West Exchanges, where an annual meeting were held uh, for the NATO countries where they could evaluate and uh, make a strategy for their cultural exchange activities. At one of these meetings in uh, 67, um, the overall purpose of cultural exchange were uh, defined as uh, working at two levels, 
both in a symbolic way, showing that relations with the Eastern Bloc um, countries had bettered with momentaneous setbacks, as was said, but also as instrumental in a way to actively um, influence um, the, the situation in the countries and stimulate changes. So, um, similarly, it was also declared at Danish side that the um, uh, Danish East uh, foreign policy and cultural policy should uh, at one side be bridge building uh, better relations, but also work uh, proactively to stimulate uh, the Eastern European states to loosen their ties with the Soviet Union. As such, um, these um, uh, exchanges can be seen along with uh, what is known as the Ostpolitik formulated by Willy Brandt and uh, the West German government and through the slogan of change through rapprochement, Wandel durch Annehmung. Turning to the exhibitions, um, the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs received an invitation in 1960 for an exhibition of uh, Danish art in the Social Republic of Yugoslavia. The results carried out by the Artist Committee for Exhibitions Abroad was um, called Danish Art, Danska Umetnost, um, and presented Danish art since 1900 with an emphasis on living artists. It featured 150 works culminating, I guess one could say, with the Cobra artist Karl Henning Pedersen and Henry Heerup um, and their contemporaries Sven V. Hansen, Michael Mortensen and Palle Nielsen. It toured Yugoslavia in Belgrade, Zagreb, and Ljubljana at the Moderna Galleria, where it was reported very successful with an audience of 10,000 and uh, uh, quite extensive media coverage. Then, interestingly, the, expression, uh, the uh, exhibition was requested to be shown in Poland by the Polish government and was then spontaneously shown at the Sajeta uh, Gallery in Warsaw um, in 1961. Through so swift diplomatic work corresponding with a brand new cultural exchange agreement with Denmark and Poland. Again with success and with most attention on the Cobra artists. And um, it became the first of um, um, staying relations with Poland um, with a series of exhibitions throughout the 60s of Danish art and vice versa, Polish art in Denmark. Maybe the most, here is um, the showing of, uh, of the big Danish art exhibition uh, in 61 in Poland. Um, but was followed up in 65 with a big solo presentation of Cobra painter Egil Jakobsen, um, again at the Sajeta uh, and also in Krakow. I've seen that it was uh, one of only seven exhibitions of um, uh, solo presentations of Western artists during the Polish thaw of the Gomulka era from uh, 55 to 70. Again, the exhibition was organized um, with help of the cultural exchange agreement uh, between Denmark and Poland uh, and the apparatus of, of diplomacy, but also through involvement of the artist himself, who took up the curatorial task, went to uh, Warsaw to set up the exhibition, and even brought a class um, he taught at the Royal Danish Art Academy to meet with the Polish art scene in 65. So um, the artist was definitely actively involved and not used without his knowledge. And again, artistic and, um, and diplomatic relation corresponds. Also as the foreign minister of Denmark visited his um, Polish colleague to which he had uh, close contacts um, at the time of the exhibition. Jakobsen would also have um, uh, continuous contacts with the Polish art scene and uh, was uh, seemingly a recognized name here. Um, it's documented that Polish state TV visited his exhibition openings in Copenhagen in the 70s and the National Museum in National, yeah, National Museum is called in Warsaw, um, would receive his painting, uh, Fellini's Wife, as a gift from Jakobsen that was often exhibited um, in 1978. A rare occasion of a Western uh, modern artwork entering a state collection in a state socialist country, I should think. 
That museum was also um, the setting of an exhibition presenting three Cobra artists, um, first organized in, um, in Budapest uh, at the um, uh, uh, Musanok mentioned before um, a presentation of uh, Elsa Elfeldt, uh, Igil Jakobsen, and Karl Henning Pedersen, brought together by the director of the Danish National Gallery at the time, uh, Lars Rostrup Bøjsen, um, uh, also as a thank you for a presentation of uh, Hungarian um, Cubist artists uh, in Denmark. But again, with uh, active involvement uh, of the three. Um, uh, exhibited artists, or the two of them still alive there, um, that was successful in uh, Budapest, uh, and at least in Denmark, even more uh, talked about at the Polish staging. That was because of the events happening in Poland in uh, uh, the autumn of, uh, of 1980 with solidarity um, uh, and, um, and the event of change that was um, followed closely uh, in Denmark. It was read by Danish press as the Danish um, uh, rebel painters um, helping um, uh, the riots of, uh, of the Polish workers as an act of solidarity with solidarity, which was uh, not the way it was uh, really planned, but uh, Danish press were eager to read it that way, uh, and the artist didn't oppose that reading. Uh, Egil Jakobsen said himself that um, he um, definitely had sympathy with, um, with the Polish people and the artists and hoped that um, his doings could help that, uh, that he felt that um, the Nordic countries uh, were something that um, the Polish artists were looking towards almost as a knife boil in the, in the Cold War divided world. So I think... Um, uh, there were two motives in at least the Danish uh, reading of the exhibition. They were eager to promote um, the Cobra artists uh, as, uh, as a free art, um, different from, um, from the state art of socialist realism, but also emphasized the contacts of Egil Jakobsen previously, um, that uh, the artist diplomacy of Jakobsen had created its results and that there the were contacts and that Denmark was in a position to... Uh, establish such contacts. Um, but uh, for the exhibition, diplomacy and exchanges with Poland, they were um, turned down um, after the state of emergency in uh, the early 80s. And that's a general image um, that uh, when such event that was seen as um, uh, undesired happened, um, um, uh, the tap was closed. Such things had also happened uh, in '68 uh, after the Soviet invasion uh, uh, of Czechoslovakia, uh, which uh, even uh, caused the cancellation of a Danish-Soviet um, friendship year that was uh, planned to have taken place in '69. So a changing climate that um, cultural exchanges and the uh, uh, willingness to exchange definitely related to both at the above level but also at uh, artist level. I think it was debated and not the Prague 68 um, condition among Danish artists. But up in the 1980s where Cobra could no more count as contemporary arts but, uh, but rather the history of modern arts, we see a new museal dimension in the, in the Cobra exhibitions across the curtain. And um, that is characteristic of the largest uh, Cobra exhibition project, uh, a touring exhibition um, called uh, the Danish Artists of the Cobra Group, uh, focusing mainly on their early production um, before they were Cobra uh, from um, the World War II years, the 40s and uh, up to the early 50s. Um, that presented eight exhibitions, uh, eight, eight, eight artists, and were shown at um, several um, uh, locations uh, in nearly all of the European uh, state socialist countries. Uh, it toured for almost three years and became um, organized through a collaboration of three newly founded uh, Danish art museums in Jutland, uh, the Kunstmuseum Silkeborg formed around the collections of Asger Jorn, uh, Herning Kunstmuseum and Holstebro Kunstmuseum. Um, so it's a remarkable development from the um, central institutions in Copenhagen, both from political and uh, 
museal side taking care of the, the um, of the cultural diplomacy activities in the beginning of the era to new institutions born out of uh, post-war Denmark themselves as these museum being involved as producers and executors. The museum people and their technical staff would travel along with the exhibition uh, and, um, uh, and install it in the local context, um, also making us aware how much work that was actually involved here how difficult it was to get such things done. An interesting aspect is that the museums themselves were also made visible in the presentation. Uh, here, a photo from the Prague staging uh, at uh, the time, right? The, at the National Gallery, uh, the Namesti Primatora, uh, I think a temporary venue uh, uh, outside of, of the main institution. But uh, remarkable that. Uh, the new museums of modern art in the modernist architecture was also highlighted um, as a desirable image of modern Denmark and uh, fitting with the diplomatic vision. We also have a, a photo from the opening with a performance by jazz musician uh, Pelle Mikkelborg, again to the collection of, uh, uh, of opening events pointed at before. But a large tour that interestingly ended in the country closest to the Danish border, um, the GDR, where it was finally shown after much delay and negotiation in uh, 1988 um, uh, at the National Gallery. Um, it was not uncontroversial to show post-war abstraction uh, in the GDR, and typically I think also the most figurative of the Cobra painters Naivist um, Henry Hiob was chosen for the image, giving a quite different um, impression that the very 80s looking Yugoslavian catalog uh, issued there. So that kind of was the final frontier for the Danish cultural uh, exhibition diplomacy to get into the GDR, um, where other events would soon take over uh, after 1988. Uh, but I think through this exhibition, we can see that uh, they were pursued, uh, made use of different formats from the larger state diplomatical presentation of Danish art as such, on a more formal level, to the more intimate presentation of uh, individual artists like um, Egil Jacobsen uh, and uh, or the three artists put together. So there was this um, use of the diplomatic system, but also um, an attempt to make it invisible, to make the exhibitions appear as natural as possible, as an, um, uh, as an unmediated meeting with the Danish artists. And then they raise these questions about the artists' involvement, uh, were they eager to partake in the cultural diplomacy, um, were they allied with the um, um, with the Danish state interests also being former communists, but breaking with party communism and the establishment of the realist doctrine also in Danish communism in the early for, uh, in the, the late 40s. That's interesting questions. Uh, also, if a kind of artist-based diplomacy was possible, if the, arti if the uh, artist activities could lead to uh, new dialogues um, behind the official agenda. Um, also corresponding to uh, the way this exhibition worked on the western side, um, the internationalization of a small state like Denmark in the art world settling in the post-war years. Here I think it's important to take up the small state relations in divided Europe, in this case between Denmark and countries like Poland and Czechoslovakia. And uh, with these words I would like to say thank you and also point you that um, this case study has just been published in an article in the Atlas Bulletin, um, together with other studies of uh, Nordic-Baltic cross-border connectivity, uh, also from my research project. So thank you very much.